Um, with that, we will turn it over to Helena Walalinga. And Helena is an indigenous environmentalist and human rights activist from Sarajaku and that community in Ecuador. And so we are so grateful for you and cannot wait to hear your presentation. Hi, um, thank, you for, thank you for having me. Um, so my name is Elena, I'm 18 years old and I come from an indigenous community in the Ecuadorian Amazon. Um, and just to give you a context of like what it looks like in my community. So it's um, in the middle of the jungle in the Amazon, uh, we live in small huts and uh, we still live of um, hunting and what we harvest. So it's a very traditional way of living. Um, and so when we talk about climate change, I'm sure a lot of you have heard uh, the words climate justice or you have heard that the climate crisis in, is interconnected with all the other issues that we have in in our society um for example uh inequality uh poverty etc and so for indigenous people um climate change is very much real and very much um active in our everyday lives uh, but what a lot of people don't know is that uh, we're also directly affected uh, of what creates climate change or what uh, contributes to climate change and that that is um, the fossil fuel industry so in my case or in my community's case um, in Ecuador uh, a few years back um, the oil uh, an oil company arrived to our territories without our consent and said hey we're gonna drill for oil here and obviously that was not um, okay for the people in my community and there was an uprising um, and that instead was met with um, atrocities uh, from from the Ecuadorian government and from uh, the company that was looking for uh, looking to to drill for oil in in my community um, and and when it comes to the Amazon the Amazon is fundamental uh, to combat climate change and you know there's a lot of forest and we have a massive biodiversity um, but how do we actually keep uh, the Amazon protected and how do we stop deforestation and um, how are we how are we going to like keep protect this extremely important place on this earth and I know that there's a lot of people that ask this question and um, the answer is is quite simple um, and it is uh, indigenous people. So, for example, in my case, uh, where we were uh, threatened by oil companies, the people of the community, the indigenous communities, um, stood up for the community. And because of that, there was no um, there was no digging for oil. They didn't exploit for oil in our territory. And so, by to protect the Amazon and to protect land. Um, it is very important to make sure that indigenous people's rights are respected. And that, that is why the climate crisis goes in hand with, for example, human rights issues um, that occur in countries like mine. Um, so to be able to protect the Amazon in the future, we actually have to make sure that the indigenous people on these lands have their right respected and that they have the right to uh, decide for what happens uh, on their own territories, um, because just only in my province, where I where I live in Ecuador, um, about ninety percent of the protected areas uh, in my province is where indigenous people live. There, th these areas are the only areas where there is still um, forest left. Um, and this is an extremely important to recognize because especially in, in for example, my country, um, indigenous people are, are not given this credit or um, are, are not recognized as the defenders and as the protectors of these forests and of these lands. Um, 
and and to know that you know if we actually want to to keep protecting the Amazon forest, we first need to start protecting the people that actually protect it. Um, and that is so important to know, especially as 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 young persons and um, and as people that are not living in these areas, because that gives you uh, a lot of a lot of power. Um, because when we are facing these kinds of issues back in our homes, back in our territories, we uh, are in need of, of the support of, of people from the outside. And it, it sounds, you know, like, uh, no, I cannot do anything from, for I, from where I am from, uh, but in fact, you can. And I know that, for example, social media is an extremely, extremely helpful tool and by putting uh, pressure on people that make the decisions in our countries um, is is very helpful, and and to always be you know aware of what is happening, to teach others about what is happening um, in in these threatened areas is very important, so that we can keep protecting it for for future generations. Um, and so, yeah, I just wanted to say that that uh, the support from other places and from young people is extremely important. And and I'm so happy to be here um, talking to you. And uh, I hope that uh, we all can become more aware of what is going on and that we can um, then, you know, by um, creating awareness, start to take action ourselves um, so that we can we can combat this and that we can o overcome this. So yeah, thank you. Kun, I think you're on mute. Keeps getting you. <laughs> so sorry for the, uh, thank you so much, Helena, for sharing your thoughts. Again, um, your ideas, youth is so important in this discussion and uh, we are so grateful for having you, really so happy uh, to have you online. Thank you so much.